Asajj Ventress was one of Star Wars The Clone Wars' most memorable characters, a dark acolyte and assassin who eventually left the CIS and became a bounty hunter. But Ventress's character predates The Clone Wars. She had previously been featured in the 2003 Clone Wars micro series, as well as a few EU novels and, most notably, several comic series. While the Clone Wars version of Ventress isn't all that dissimilar from the version we got in the comics, it lacked some of the nuances the comics had given her, especially Star Wars Republic. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Ventress as she was depicted prior to the release of the Clone Wars. Asajj Ventress was first introduced in the standalone comic Jedi Mace Windu, in which she played a role in Dark Jedi Sora Bulk's Gambit to turn those Jedi who were skeptical of fighting in the Clone Wars against the Republic. She wanted to be one of the main antagonistic characters of the Clone Wars era, alongside Count Dooku, General Grievous, Sora Bulk, and Dirge. Ventress made appearances in the Clone Wars micro series, in several novels and short stories, and in comics. She most notably appeared in the Star Wars Republic series, a set of terrifically dark stories that we highly recommend you check out. It was Star Wars Republic, in fact, that she was first given a backstory. Now, the basic details of the story of Asajj Ventress are, thanks to the Clone Wars, widely known. As the Clone Wars describes it, she was taken from the Night Sisters as an infant to serve as tribute and raised as a slave on Ratatak. There, her master was killed, and she subsequently was taken as an apprentice by Kai Narek, a Jedi Knight. But thugs killed Narek, pushing Ventress to the dark side, and from there, she joined the service of Count Dooku. This story, as it was presented in the Clone Wars, is actually based on the one presented in Star Wars Republic, different only in that it retcons Ventress's Night Sister ancestry. But this version of the story is rather bare bones compared to the original and much less bloody as well. To understand Asajj Ventress, you need to understand her adopted homeworld, which was briefly glimpsed in Clone Wars flashbacks. That world was Ratatak, a planet which sat on the fringes of the unknown regions. It was an unforgiving, rocky planet with a climate unsuitable for agriculture and an animal population that, by the Clone Wars, was nearly extinct. It had just under 1 billion inhabitants by the time of the Clone Wars, but its population was dying out, a death that had been going on for centuries by that point. The population of Ratatak was mostly comprised of Ratataki, a pale-skinned species of humanoids, but it boasted many other species as well, drawn from Forgotten Republic expeditions and the unknown regions alike, almost all stranded on Ratatak because of its negligible infrastructure. It was unknown to most of the galaxy and so its population had to fend for itself. Ratatak was incapable of supporting them all. And so, the planet became embroiled by war, fought between tribal nations and other unaffiliated syndicates. As the essential Atlas put it, the oral accompaniment to life on Ratatak is the drums of war and the rattle of bones. It was into this hell that Asajj Ventress was raised. It is unknown what her original name was, but it wasn't Ventress. That name belonged to the leaders of one of Ratatak's major tribes. The couple that served as the leaders of tribe Ventress bought Asajj as a child, and though the relationship between the two parties is unclear, they were close enough for the leaders of rival tribes to consider Asajj the daughter of the Ventresses. But whether she was the adopted daughter or merely a slave of the Ventresses, the story ends all the same. The Ventresses were assembling a massive army in a bid for supremacy on Ratatak in the planet's southern hemisphere, and so the leader of the Volik, another tribe, prepared an assault to crush them before they became a threat. He killed the Ventresses, leaving only Asajj alive, orphaned on a planet that was no place for a child. Not long after the slaughter of the Ventresses, a ship crashed on Ratatak. That ship belonged to Kai Narek, a Jedi Knight who was now stranded and cut off from the Order. The Volik, fearful of his powers, tried to kill him, but Narek escaped and he stumbled upon a young Asajj. He noted that she was strong in the Force, and so he took her as his unofficial Padawan, training her in the ways of the Jedi. On their own, Narek likely would have been captured and killed, and Ventress likely would have died as well. But together, they not only survived the harsh conditions of Ratatak, but became something the planet had never known before. They became heroes. 
Anarik and Ventress traveled across Radatak, intervening in conflicts in hopes of bringing an end to the planet's centuries-long cycle of slaughter and death. They made peace between factions, ended wars, and united armies. But the warlords that ruled the planet didn't take kindly to this peacemaking. The leader of Volik, seeing the two Jedi as a threat to his power, united the scattered warlords and generals of Radatak under a temporary truce and executed a bid to free their world of the strange warlocks that were upending their way of life. They only completed half of their plan. Kynarek was killed in the assault, but Ventress, enraged and distraught, managed to escape. Once more, Ventress had been orphaned, and this time she was set on revenge. Taking her master's lightsaber to wield alongside her own, Asajj Ventress set off on a crusade across Radatak. She assembled an army and went to war, fighting against nearly the entire planet. The leader of Volik had brought 12 warlords together for this plot, and one by one, Ventress hunted them down and killed them, scattering their armies and ending their lives as painfully as she could manage. For each dead warlord, she tattooed a new mark on her clean-shaven head. The leader of Volik was eventually captured by Ventress as well, but she didn't kill him. Instead, she made him a slave, putting him to work building a massive citadel in her honor with other prisoners of war. When the fortress was completed, she kept him in her dungeons, regularly torturing him for entertainment. Asajj Ventress did something that nobody had ever done before. By the time her crusade was complete, she had united Radatak under her rule, becoming, as she put it, the queen of a blood-soaked world. Three months into the Clone Wars, she joined Count Dooku as a Dark Acolyte, bringing Radatak into the Confederacy of Independent Systems. She became one of the CIS's foremost commanders, responsible for killing dozens of Jedi and placing sizable bounties on others. Looking at Ventress through the lens of the Republic and the Jedi, she seems like a vicious, cold-blooded murderer. She took pleasure in the killing of her Jedi opponents and was notoriously harsh even toward her allies. But if you look at her through the lens of the Radataki, a different picture emerges. Those things were simply the norm on Radatak. In fact, they encouraged leaders to be bloodthirsty and violent. To the citizens of Radatak, Ventress was actually an exception to this pattern. You would think that Ventress's rule over Radatak was as brutal as her conquest, but it actually wasn't. From the hints we get in Star Wars Republic, she actually did a great deal for the Radataki people. As we established earlier, she built a great fortress to reside in as a monument for her victory, but she also built a city around it, providing the Radataki with the infrastructure they hadn't had before. Where the people of Radatak had at best feared their previous leaders, they all but worshipped Ventress, who they saw almost as a savior. This insight helps clarify another oddity of Ventress's character as presented by the Republic comics. You see, from Ventress's very first appearance in the series, she consistently referred to Anakin, Obi-Wan, and other opponents as false Jedi. This, unfortunately, wasn't really echoed in any other depiction of her character, and it was also somewhat inconsistent, but it was regular enough to give many readers pause when it first came out. Ultimately, Asajj Ventress didn't really see herself as a Sith, despite that one time she claimed as much to Dooku and all her vying to be his apprentice. As she put it in issue 60 of Star Wars Republic, she was a Jedi Master, a true Jedi Master. While the pretenders that said she had fallen sat back in safety on Coruscant, leaving her master on Radatak to die, she had ended Radatak's wars, at first peacefully alongside Kynarek, and later with blood. Dooku encouraged this perception and used it to manipulate Ventress, teaching her that true Jedi didn't fear the dark side, didn't hesitate to do what was right, and didn't hesitate to kill. So, that was a more detailed look at Asajj Ventress, the hero of Radatak and Dark Acolyte of the CIS. But, as per usual, I want to know what you think. Did you know this somewhat obscure bit of Star Wars Legends lore? Let us know in the comment section below. And just before we go guys, you know the drill, we have a whole bunch of links in the description below where you can join the wider Geetsleys community on our Geetsleys gaming network with our Roblox and Gary's mod servers, our main Discord server where you can interact with other Star Wars fans such as yourself, and if you want to support the channel more than you already are by watching this video, check us out on the Patreon. If you do donate, you get access to a special behind the scenes Discord where you can see just how we operate. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Video.